It took me eight months mm -hmm. before I could put our wedding pictures up. Yes. Michelle, it's not about you. Yes. It's about Christ. Michelle, in the night, I woke up to pee and bam. Mm. It was like a murder scene. Mm. Jesus visited me. A lot of the things I was accused of in my marriage were from a dream he had. Most of my, my faults were spiritual. Oh, so he dreams about it and accuses you? Yeah. Mm. I start to feel like I'm a bad person. Mm. I saw you mm -hmm. going into a lodge with a Buddha Buddha guy. <laughs> You're sleeping with a Buddha Buddha guy. Mm -hmm. I have told you, God told me. When I tried to reason with him, he erupted some more. Then apparently me, I stood up and I began quarreling even more than him. First I would be preaching. This year they are going to listen to you. I'm thinking, no, you should. All right, Michelle, now we are entering into year two of marriage. We are done with part one. I mean, year one, you know, you've gotten your massage, nails done. <laughs> heart done. You're a good wife yeah, the heart to has, him. You're yeah. a good wife now. The ego is in order. Mm. <laughs> so now we are entering year two. Are we still at the hotel? Uh, let's left? just do year two. Mm -hmm. how, how does that go now? He's not now, he has come home, because now he's been moved back to Kampala. Kampala yeah. And I really needed that lesson in um, humility, because I'm going to be with him every day. Mm. And um, I learned how to just let him be. Mm. I remember um, we had an incident where he had just gotten a job promotion, mm -hmm. and um, he threw a party. Mm -hmm. And what was funny, I, I, needed, I needed this training. First, he decides we're moving house. Okay. In three days. Oh, wow. You know how I am? Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to move house, we need a whole month to plan. We need to buy the boxes. We need to park and mm. label. And, mm. you know, it's a process. My plants. But now, find yeah. a house. Three days. I went and found a house. We move in X amount of days, which made sense because if we stayed extra days, then the landlord mm. would have charged that and uh, charged us an extra so, month. Yeah. But in my head, I'm thinking, but how do things just happen in your head? Can't we plan? But remember, I'm no longer in a position mm. to reason. Yeah. So, whoosh, we move house. I'm still unpacking, trying to remember where the knives are in what mm. box and where my t-shirts are and where what is. So you're trying to put the and house together. Yeah, and he's saying, on Saturday we have a party. Like, yo. <laughs> you know what pa party means? Yeah. Hosting people. Mm. And I'm thinking, the house is not yet a home. Mm. I you don't just know moved. yet where to hang what. Mm. What I didn't tell you, in first year, it took me eight months. Mm-hmm before I could put our wedding pictures up. Why eight? Why, why that long? Because from the minute I entered the marriage, I was struggling to enter the marriage. Mm, your body was there. Your, 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 my, your, my, my, I was physically there. You're physically there, but... But because I hadn't arrived mentally, mm. emotionally was struggling. Okay. So it took a lot of counseling within myself to put the wedding the pictures up. excitement was not there. You know, These gifts pictures. that I got at my bridal shower mm. that I never opened up. Mm. Like my friend Masha gave us t-shirts, matching t-shirts. I kept looking at that gift bag and putting it back. And we never touched them. I didn't, didn't match outfits? We didn't do those things of photo shoot <laughs> romantic. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's somebody that gave me lovely scented candles. Mm. Charity. I'm only using them now. <laughs> Okay. Marge gave me a nice jar of um, a beautiful jar for body lotion. It's beautiful. It has. It looks like one of those ancient mm. Egypt thingies. I still use it as decor. Nicole, I've not really used any of your. I need yet. us to think of these things. Mm. Happiness comes within. Mm. It's not material things. Mm -hmm. I was ushered in with everything, but because I hadn't, I failed to mm -hmm. understand to relate with this person. I did not really get in. Barbara, my friend in the UK, she sent me a lot of things. Scrubs. I only saw the bag a few months back. Mm. And I started to use the items in August. So the struggle was there.
But I want to thank God that he, in this period, he aligned me with people that walked with me. Yeah. I've told you about um, my mom, my friend Barbara in the UK. There was people that would encourage me. And the beauty of it is they were all strong in the Lord. Mm. So the support system was always there to point me to Christ. Nice. Michelle, it's not about you. Nice. It's about Christ. Mm. It's not about the other person. It's about Christ. Yeah. So there, every day, an injection of humility to the end. Mm. So we had gotten to this part. What was I saying? You were, uh, that, that told you to the yeah, party. Yeah. A party so in, on move Saturday. house on Monday mm -hmm. is a party on Friday. Mm. Hey, carpenter, drilling, making, things, making sure that things are in order. And then there's got to be food as well. Now me, even though I've decided to submit in all aspects, yeah. the Michelle in me tries to pop out sometimes mm. because now it involves guests. Yeah. I'm happy to play doll when we're here, but if we're going to invite my friends, I want things to look a certain type of way. So I want to contribute. Mm. So, you know, I offer to get a caterer, external caterer to do, you know, some food because yeah. he was having a barbecue mm -hmm. so i'm thinking i'm contributing i got a beating for that you think you're so smart i remember <laughs> i remember when the party ended he said to me people didn't even like your rice everyone enjoyed barbecue i'm like is it a competition <laughs> and then i was upset with myself <laughs> like but michelle why don't you learn i remember that Preparation for that party was so hectic on my side. Mm. You will ask your husband. Because mm. when he arrived, I was sweating. I was so upset. He kept asking me, are you okay? I'm thinking, you have no idea. And um, <laughs> it wasn't a party for me, long story short. You were very busy. Because I remember before I went out to greet everybody, mm. I knelt down by the bed. And I'd gotten to a po point where instead of crying, I called my mom. What do I do now? Mm. She would say to me, Michelle. What? Translation. If your butt, if you feel like your butt is so bruised. Mm. Time to put the butt. That, yeah, let him, you know, beat the back. Like, get more stripes on that mm. back. Whatever it is, you have to keep getting them. Mm. So I said to her, thank you very much. I hung up the phone. What I noticed, the trajectory in all of this, every time I would go through that sort of challenge, mm. In the next day or two, the Lord would elevate me spiritually. Mm. I told you that's how the YouTube, the, the podcast was birthed. Yeah. That's how the YouTube channel was birthed. Yeah. But what I noticed and that amazed me was um, the Women's Day for Kansanga Miracle Center. Yeah. I think it was 2021 or 2022. Mm -hmm. I had just come out of the fairy furnace trying to organize my brain. That's when I got a phone call from a lady. Hi, is this Michelle? This is Michelle. Oh, Pastor Roland has said he needs you to be on the panel for Women's Day. Mm -hmm. I asked her, which Michelle? And she, Michelle, oh, okay, okay. So I sat down and I thought, I, you know, the Lord taught me a lot. There was always a reward. Mm. So this one was a message of, now that you've passed this exam, yeah. I can put you on a panel to speak to the women. Mm. Let me tell you, I went and sat on that panel. I am hot on fire, mm. Holy Spirit, because of the canes that had been given. Yeah. Eh? yeah. That every question that was asked, I removed Michelle mm. and I put Jesus. So in the end, everyone would come to you and say like, oh my God, you spoke well. Oh my God, you're so wise. I'm thinking you have no idea. I am just <laughs> Michelle. It is by the stripes yeah. that I appear the way you see me. Mm. So it was always like that. Every time something that, like that would happen, that's when you'd get someone that's overly spiritual inviting mm. you to do something that's... So the more the flesh died... yeah. The, the mother, more the, spirit the spiritual. So you move spirit. from being a territorial person to a celestial person. Yeah. So when I got the formula, I learned to sit through the fire mm. some more. These things that I haven't told you, for example, when um, um, I suffered a miscarriage. In year one, year two. There was now two. Now that we're in year two. Year one. There was so two. this was in year one. Yeah. And... Um, he was away because okay. he was working up country at the time. And um, I um, I think I was three months. Mm. But what's interesting is when I go to the doctors, would, it was just an empty, empty sack. Mm. There was no baby, okay. just a sack. Mm. So, you know, us born again, ah, the baby will come. Mm. I have faith, you know. But um, 
three months into it i'm by myself remember i told you that um a friend was living with us at the time um, yeah Mugabo. Mm. so i woke up one night first i went to the doctor and the doctor said you need to have a washout mm. this is not a baby mm. this is not a baby at all yeah miscalculation yeah we need to wash you out but i still had faith I did nothing about it. He said, we need to wash you out. He's called Dr. Gilbert, Albert Gilbert. He's a very good doctor in Zambia. I like him. He's the one that cut my baby out. Mm. So he said to me, Michelle. The one you have now, just mm. do not confuse me. <laughs> the one I have yeah. now. So he said, you know, Michelle, you're my friend. I'll tell you for free. Let us wash you out mm. so that you can make room for an actual baby. Yeah. So I went home and I said, ah. You know, God. Mm, believe in God. Hey, I'm a moving word. Mm. You know? So, in the night, I woke up to pee and bam. Mm. It was like a murder scene. So, I'm there and I don't know what to do because um, my husband was up country. Mm. It's late in the night. I called Itesi mm. in America and I told her, this is what's happening. I didn't, I just told her what was happening. This is what has happened. Mm, this is your friend. Yeah. Okay. And she told me, but Michelle, I told you that day you moved house, that that is not good. Because when we moved house, I did all of the heavy lifting. Heavy lifting. Yeah. And she said, okay. The day you moved, was he up country? Or who he was, was around. Was he with you when you're shifting? Yes, he was. And he was. I'm trying to understand why they're getting all these things done. Uh, is he busy with something? He's good at um, delegation. Let's just leave okay. it that way. Yeah, he's okay. good at delegation. Mm. So, um, my friend, she says to me, Michelle, do you have anybody with you at home? I say, yeah, my friend so-and-so is here. Mm. So, she, she says, go to hospital now. I'll send you the money. Okay. So... Mugaba walks into the room. That guy is so humble. God bless him. Mugaba is the friend that you were staying with at the, the one time. that introduced me to my ex. Okay. He cleaned the place up. Wow. Packed mm. a bag and took me to hospital. Mm. In the morning, um, we let my husband know. Mm. And um, I got to hospital at about... I got to hospital... At about 2 a.m., mm. there was no doctors, and um, the doctor was phoned, and then I was told that the doctor would be coming in at about 7 a.m. That's when we shall go to theater and things. Mm. What I love the most about that incident is um, I am, um, when I went to sleep, mm. Jesus visited me oh, in the so. hospital. Mm. I didn't feel a single drop of sadness. He came in and touched me. Mm. First of all, as I fell asleep, I was praising, I was singing a certain hill song. Okay. Song, and he came in and I was so happy, and he smiled. And then this he, is you, like in a dream. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I woke up so happy mm. these guys came they wooed me to theater me. i was so chatty mm. the guy that does the anesthesia he just kept laughing and yeah like oh you're you're one of a kind i mm. said to him oh it's nothing jesus is here mm. so operation was done and evening we went back home mm. and again that's one of those that when it was done in a few days, that's when you get a big spiritual phone call. Michelle, we need you here for this. Mm. So I learned the pattern. Oh, was he notified? Oh. Did you call your husband? <gasps> yeah, we, him called him. we called him. We we called him. Okay. That he was up country and he later showed up over the weekend and okay. life went on. Mm. So anyway, um we um we finished the part of the party. Mm. Again now I have learned. Silence is the key. Mm. Silence is golden. And now I immerse myself so much into the silence that um, I start to feel like I'm a bad person. Mm. Why? Because I learned to be so much in God and not let the other person in. Mm. So there's things he would say 
and I feel like I have to talk back, but mm. I keep hearing, keep quiet. Mm. So I'd keep quiet and it passes. Then there'd be incidents where I'd speak up. When I speak up, I'm taken back to year one. Mm. Then I learned that, okay, it's always going to be this way. I became a doll. I remember there's an incident where I tried to speak up. It was about her help. Okay. She was with us. She was a good girl. And because she was a good girl, when her daughter was on holiday, a three-year-old, I invited her over to live with us so she doesn't miss her child. Yeah. I don't know. Something happened. A lot of the things I was accused of in my marriage were from a dream he had. Most of my, my faults were spiritual. Oh, and so he dreams about it and accuses you? Yeah. For it? Yeah. But it hasn't happened yet. You oh, he, know that. He, he, he trusted his spirit life. Oh, that what I dreamt about is true. It has yeah, happened. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I had many of those. I saw you mm -hmm. going into a lodge with a Buddha Buddha guy. You're <laughs> sleeping with a Buddha Buddha guy. We'll get there. Mm. So anyway, this girl, she's asked to leave. Mm. So I, apparently he had a dream when she was getting into our bedroom, so she wants to take over the marriage. Okay. So I tell him, listen, if you want to send her away, is it okay? Mm -hmm. You're saying God has told you she's bad. Okay. Can I also inquire of the Lord mm. so that we can make a joint decision? Mm. I have told you, God told me. <laughs> okay. I say, okay, I will ask God also. Mm. Now I was doing things not out of emotion, but stubbornness of really, if let me check if this person is okay now, if we can relate. Yeah. As if knocking on the head. Can I come in? Mm. So, I was given one night. One night to ask God. Mm. Mm. I told him, look, God speaks in his own time. Yeah. I can't force him. What? Uh, she has to go. She has to go. I will not find her when I return. Yo. <laughs> I took, I drove the girl back to her, to her home. Did to Was her the girl... Like, did she have any, you know, she any problems good. prior to this dream? She was just you, okay. I told you there was a certain pattern. Mm -hmm. When anyone would come to the house and they get deep into the word and they start to get revelation and mm, act in a Christ-like manner, I, I, think, sent away. I think that ambience which you get and mm. you start to be silent when this person erupts is annoying yeah. to the other person. Because mm. I think they would look like they're undermining him. Because mm. I remember a lot of the kids in the house were accused of listening to me and not him. Oh, so what you mean is that the kids in the house started adopting the kind of behavior that you have of so, keeping quiet. So yeah, it's almost mm. as if the house was divided. Okay. Yeah. And you know, a house divided cannot stand. Yeah. So, sent her off. Again, I cried. Mm, because you were so attached, yeah. like you had mentioned. Earlier. And then that's when I said, you know what? From today onwards, I'm not getting any more people. You bring whoever you like. Mm. Then he brought, he started to bring them. Like, he reigned nicely mm. with me in silence. With so, me, mm. you know, uh, ideally, in he an African... that incident took us to the counselor. After you've asked, I'll tell you about <laughs> that, one of our counseling yeah. sessions. Um, that... You know, ideally in an African, I don't know about the Western culture, but African setting, mm. these things are like the woman's duty, mm. you know, you know, uh, getting who to help with the home, you know, house helps, mm. nannies, mm. shopping, all those things. They're like, that's a woman's duty. That's her section. So how was that? Nicole? Humility is stripping yourself of all of your understanding mm. and adopting the other person's. Mm. And because that's not about to adopt his, adopting Jesus's. And what's Jesus's? Stay silent. Mm -hmm. Because the girl that he brought, she noticed that he was calling all the shots all the way from the kitchen to the entire house. And then, <laughs> bless her, that little girl. I've forgotten her name. She'd say to me, I'd come to the kitchen and she said, But madam, why is it that now it is daddy who is saying this? Shouldn't it be you? <laughs> the way she used to speak was so funny. She was so troubled. So I'd tell her, don't worry. It's okay. And every time she'd get a beating for something that she hasn't done right, yeah. I'd always 
past the back door and come to her and hug her okay, and tell yeah. her it is okay it is okay just do what daddy wants it's for you, I, hey, I had to learn to be fixed like, 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 like Abigail. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy who, who was hired as a driver at our house, eh? and um, three weeks into it, mm -hmm. he had to go. I don't want to get into the reasons because we're not here to, you know, mm. paint other people purple. So um, when he had to go, he, he came to me first. They'll always come to me first to apologize. Mm. Madam, you know. I can't handle, I have to go back. Mm. I said to him, but where will you go? Because he had told me before that, before he came to do this job in our house, he was a shuttle oh, guy, yeah. you know, dri driving, driving kids. Yeah. Um, kids, kindergarten kids, uh, to and fro. So I asked him, will you find your job? He said, I would rather stay home, but I have to go. So first I learned how to handle my pain. Mm -hmm. But before I could master how to handle my own pain, I had to learn how to manage other people. I had to become shock absorber mm. to other people. Like, you know, it is well, it is yeah. well. So I went into silence mode, mm. silence mode. Now I was telling you that I got to a point where my keeping quiet mm. bothered me. I was thinking, Michelle, you're turning into a terrorist. Like you can sit through something that you know is wrong and you smile. So I was battling <laughs> in my head. Mm. And I remember that, that morning we woke up and we're going to a party. Mm -hmm. and he, at, at his friend's workmate's house and he was going on and on about something and I'm thinking mm -mm. <laughs> I am not going to react I am putting on my shoes of peace my mm. breastplate of righteousness <laughs> seated in that car we are driving he's going on and on and I'm like mm. nope the word of God is a double-edged sword. So whatever you're saying, I have a scripture for it. And I'm not letting your anger rub off me. I learned how, I don't know why I don't talk to myself. Because I used to talk to myself in a your, lot in the head. In your head. Yeah, yeah. It, I, it, I could have run mad. That's how anyway, run mad. Mm, so uh, he goes out to have a haircut. Because we're going to a party, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm. No, like, no, that is the normal life. Mm -hmm. So. I'm thinking, eh, Michelle, you're graduating in terrorism. Then my phone rang. Uh -huh. It is my mom. Nicole, by the way, this lady, we shall come back to the, that phone call. Mm. I got to a space where I felt convicted in my spirit that I'm going to give this lady my plot of land. Remember, I had two acres of land in Zerobe. Yeah. And um, I thought to myself, but what do I use that place for? Before I got married, I had a dream of setting up a little farm mm. and building, because um, it's near Bugema University, yeah. and, you know, setting up a saloon and somewhere where I can, mm. you know, be a farming lady and counsel the university students and, you know, that little farm country life, life yeah. country life. So I said, what am I doing with this land? This lady needs it more than I. So I called her and told her, do you want somewhere to do farming? I want to give you my land. In fact... You can use my land. So after I spoke to Barbara in the UK, I told her, Barbara, I don't know if I'm running crazy, but I want to give Mama Laila my land. She told me, Michelle, those things are nothing. Give it to her. Mm -hmm. The world and everything that is in it is, in, is, is our father's. And besides, she's done a good job and she's in need. Just give it to her. Mm -hmm. When did you buy it? 2013. What have you done with it between 2013 and 2021? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Give it away. So I pick her up. I tell her, you see that land where I'm taking you? I have given it to you. Wow. She said, oh, Just no. like that. She was so surprised. She's such a darling. And then she told me mm -hmm. that um, I've, ha I've been having dreams where I'm headed that way. But I'd always stop halfway and come back. Mm -hmm. Halfway and come back. Oh. But last night I actually went. And when I got to the place, uh -huh. there was a factory that does um, coffee. There's a mm -hmm. coffee factory. And there was X amount of trees on the side. And there's a kashrain over which doctor in the far corner. I she said, had this me. in the dream. You know, she was, she's very, very um, spiritual. Like she's, mm. she doesn't live here. Every time you call her, she's praying. Mm. So I told her, I know about the coffee factory. Uh -huh. I know about the trees, but I don't know about the shrine. So wow. let's get there wow. and you see. So everything she described was there where you are taking her. She, when she got there, she said, this is the place I saw. This is the place I saw. I've wow. been coming and stopping, I don't know, Bugema and God never. Is amazing. God is amazing. But you know what's interesting as well? It goes to show that I've been 
having this thought in the back of my mind. Oh, God knew that I'll do this, mm. but it wasn't yet time. That's right. So, you know, it made the both of us glorious. Because she was having the dreams, mm. the dreams for a while. Way before but I told until her. the night before is mm. when she actually got there. Got there in the dream. In and the now dream. it's time for you to actually take her there. So I said to her, you know what? If the maker is in it, have it. I don't mm. want it. Mm. It is yours. Yeah. And, you know, she was, wow. she was so pleased. But she deserves it. Because I told you every time I was having drama, mm. she was literally the one in that house. She has, yeah, she has been your go-to person. Yes, in yes. So anyway, back to us and our drama. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're in the car. Yeah. He's going to do his hair. Mm. So this lady calls me and tells me, Michelle, I saw last night in a dream you and your husband. You are at a gathering, very many people, but you were seated on a high, you know. Yeah. In a high place where everybody could see the both mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. And him, he's quarreling, quarreling, going on about something, and you're just watching him. And this is you Quiet. going for a gathering to, to, by the time she's giving you the call. You wait. Mm -hmm. So she told me, after he quarreled so much, you were fed up, uh -huh. you started to, you know, can you... Trying to give him signals of calm yeah, down. Uh, uh, trying to that reason with him. Seeing us. When I tried to reason with him, he erupted some more. Then apparently me, I stood up and I began quarreling even more than him. Hey. I said, never the case. Mommy, never the case. <laughs> I can't go back to where he used to be. Yeah. So, and when I got off the phone, I thought to myself, hold on, how timely. Mm. I have been having thoughts of, Michelle, I'm being a terrorist. Right. I need to start speaking back. Because mm. he would get tortured. When he would talk to me, and I, and, 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 and I only give yes, sir, okay, sir. Two word answers, What's your opinion? Two word responses. <laughs> I remember the last Christmas I shared with him. He came and said, "So this Christmas, I'm thinking we should do roast chicken. I can get a guy to roast the chicken, and we can do this. What do you think? Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> what do you want us to add? No, nice. That one is nice. We'll go with that one. Okay. And Christmas was nice." He enjoyed himself. We had a barbecue kind of Christmas, but I didn't dare bring one simple idea like, can we add passion fruits? Nothing. Don't no. add options. Uh -uh. You would antagonize the boat. <laughs> so, I had learned oh, to have okay. peace in not giving my opinion. Mm, even though you had it. So now, there's incidents where he, in the past I used to quarrel with him and we measure up mm -hmm. and he's noticing I'm quiet. So he starts to complain. You, why aren't you talking about Because you're not like you used to do. Uh -huh. This marriage is struggling. Why aren't you? <laughs> so, Samia so having conversations in my head. Yeah. Of, Actually, Michelle, I think I'm becoming a terrorist in this heart of mine. Perhaps it's I need to. to then the phone call comes. Michelle, I saw you. When you spoke back, this is what happened. So I said, okay. Now you're back to. Step forward, wife. Everything's beautiful. <laughs> Picture perfect. We get to the party mm -hmm. where we're headed. Mm. Now, at that party, he had um, he needed a, a favor okay. of his boss. So we go to this party and, you know, you greet all the workmates. And there's some you'd find and you greet in excitement when you notice that the chemistry has died. I'm thinking, uh oh, oh, this must be our late friend. So and so, mm -hmm. so even me, I go according to the yeah. chemistry, you know. So we sat down and then he told me uh, he needs to have a word with his boss to rectify something that hadn't gone right with them. Okay. So you need to come, come, come and greet. I was used to being the door. Come and greet so-and-so. Come, you know, nice mm -hmm. wife. We went over. This lady, gosh, me, I the fear boss. God. Mm -hmm. mm, the boss. This woman, eh? I wish I can meet her again. She looked at me. She had a mask on, so I could only see her eyes. Mm -hmm. You know those days of masks? Yeah. <clears throat> and she looks at me and says, she first looks at him. She looks at me for a long time. Then she says to him, listen to your wife. Wow. Mm. And then she looked at me and she said, he knows. He knows what he did. Mm. And then she looked at him again and said, listen to your wife. Then she walked off. Nicole, I went back in that chair and sat. If I needed any confirmation that the Lord was with me, because mm. previously we had met some of his friends and they're saying, oh, you're the one that spreads the gospel. Okay, let us do more seven is work. You do God's work. Mm. I had like three pats on the back, silent ones, to show me that my God is That's ever so you, present. Yeah. yeah. 
So I went back and I sat and I thought, oh wow, perhaps this is the turning point in this marriage. Because if this person who he holds so highly mm. has said that, maybe he'll start to see a bit of value in me. Meanwhile, every time we'd go to morning dew, mm -hmm. not every time, you know Wednesdays, we had yeah. such a blast. Pastor would be preaching, this year they are going to listen to you. I'm thinking, are you sure? <laughs> Faith. Faith. Yeah. They, they will listen to you. Mm. One day they'll listen to you. I'm thinking, ah, you have no idea. Anyway, so we came back home. We carried on with our life. And uh, still, there was, there was, um, there was, um, Life carried Absolutely. on as before. Mm. And I remember coming home one day, I find a child. A child, like... Let's talk about his kids. Mm, because initially, part one, he had told us in the first year that the he, boy the came. Boy came yeah. mm -hmm. And all this time, he's still around. He's still in the picture. Yeah. Okay. Then the girl comes. He had a daughter as well. Mm. But before the girl comes, we had a bit of drama. Tell us about that. Um, this girl, mm. one time during the first year in the lockdown of 2021, mm. I had gotten my dose of being disciplined. Yeah. Because then I was still learning a thing or two. Mm -hmm. And um, the baby mother phoned. Mm. She was told a thing or two. <laughs> okay. I felt sorry for her. Mm. I thought to myself, I wonder if she knows God. Because now me, I knew my balm of Gilead was the word of God. I wonder if she has a solution for those words. I hope it doesn't break her. Because she was saying, according to the conversation, she was saying that instead of me asking for money all the time mm. for upkeep, can you set up something for me so that we can get money out of it? Mm. We can have something to eat. Okay. And the words that followed were many Mm. So me, I kept quiet. And you know, when like he gets off the phone, he has to come to you or whoever is around and ask for validation. Mm. Don't you see that she's, you know, overstepping? How dare she? And you just look back and keep quiet. I also learned a new art. I learned not to say yes or no. Mm. So when someone says something that I don't agree with, I'll go like, hey. But in my heart, I'm thinking, never the case. <laughs> Father, Father, I don't agree with that one in the name of Jesus. <laughs> So that way, because when I didn't agree, I'd be at fault. Yeah, I have to be a supportive wife. Right. So I learned that answer. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Michelle. <laughs> Glory to God. So anyway, this lady, when when we got off the phone, mm. I felt convicted in my heart. Yeah. To look for her. So, by the grace of God. Mm. I found her number. Don't ask me how I'm a good investigator. I am a <laughs> woman. You know us. I found her number. Mm, the number of the, 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 the girl's mom. The girl's mom. Yeah. And I called my border border guy. Mm -hmm. A trusted one. You know I have like 1,000 border border in, guys in, in different my phone. areas. In every area called. I'm, I'm connected. You know? So I call him and I tell him, look. Also, mm -hmm. as you know, God is good. I had a contact in Katwe mm. where they make popcorn machines, yeah. all those metal works. Yeah. I had a very good hookup. So I called my hookup. I asked him, what can we do to get a popcorn machine? He gave me price range, 60, 70, but there's a very nice one for 200 and something. I told him I want a very nice one because where I'm sending it, there might not be room for repairing mm. back and forth. So he tells me I found just the one. So I called my border dude. Go to Katwe, look for this person. I'm sending the money. Okay. He got the car machine. And I also gave him extra money. Go buy a lot of popcorn and some oil. Mm. And I told him, now, I don't know where you're going, mm -hmm. but just drive to this little village okay. outside of town. When you get to the town center, call this number and tell them you have something for them. When you get there, tell them, there's no way she was supposed to know that it is me because if it comes back to this house, it will be one World War Seven. Mm -hmm. So I told her, t t I told him, tell her if she asks, tell her there's an NGO that um, takes care of single moms mm. and their kids, and you know they they, they give capital for business, and her name came up, okay. and we don't know who gave the name. So anyway, my guy, you know him, 
the border guy, I'll tell you his name after. Mm -hmm. He does the job nicely because God is so faithful. He gets to the spot and he finds a little girl. And the girl says, oh, mom is in the, in the garden doing some, you know, farming, digging. And Jaja is, I don't know where. Mm. So <clears throat> they um, send for the lady, mm. the girl's mom. And when this lady comes, she, um, boy, she looks like proper village, beat up. Mm. So the border guy, when she sees the border guy with the popcorn machine and everything, she bursts out and cries. Oh, bless. And then the border guy says to her, there's an NGO that's taking care of single moms. Mm. Exactly like I told him. Because she said, oh, I know who had sent it. Then the border guy said, no, you do not know. There's an NGO. <laughs> <laughs> so the girl stood there and so she stared she into the sky. This, this, I don't this know what guy she had thought. Seen it mm. Because she made the call. Yeah, the I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So, um, and then my border guy, because he's born again, he went into Apostle Paul mode. Mm. You should always look to God. It is God who does such good things. You should give your life to Christ. Now you see, you have a business. You didn't even ask the person who gave it to you. He talked and talked. Meanwhile, in all of this, he doesn't even know my side of the story. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I'd also given um, the border guy instructions that do this also. As you leave, pass by the closest shop. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, speak to the shop owner. Mm -hmm. Find out if that's the shop that those guys frequent. If it is the one, we need her to open up a book where we give her like some little money mm. every month in case these guys are stranded for, you know, necessities, sugar, salt. They can come and take and then you, <sighs> you reconcile. Okay. So I spoke to the shop attendant. She was so cooperative. I love God. Mm. Like God is all over everything. So we, we had a nice deal. That day closed nicely. Michelle, so, so uh -huh. you started for this lady a business. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we bought her this machine, yeah, and you know, gave her opened up an account at the shop where she can go whenever monthly. she she needs something monthly, yeah, any home mm -hmm. necessities. Mm -hmm. And your husband had no idea of no, any of he can't know. And this lady didn't call because she called she knew NGO. Where. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so hey, wow. we bless the Lord. Mm. So um fast forward. Mm. This girl comes home. Finally the dad gets his daughter to come and live with us. Mm, okay. Because remember he had been praying about this sort of thing. He wanted yeah. to live with his children. Yeah. So now all his children are home. Yeah. Okay. But this is what I find interesting. Mm -hmm. I came home from church because during the second year, oh, I injected myself into Jesus. Oh, he, he dragged me deeper mm, into church. Mm. But I'll get to that after here. So when she comes, I get out of the car. Mm -hmm. And she was seated over there, sad. When this girl saw me, she came running and she hugged me and held me so tight. Nicole, this is the first time she's seeing you. I cried. Wow. I, I saw a Jesus moment because I was thinking, I mean, I'm your stepmother, you know, and you know stepmoms can be. <laughs> <laughs> but she was so, mm. and I just knew that it was God saying something. Okay. And I wanted to ask her little self, why do you even like me? Like, what do you know? Because I know you do not know. Mm. So for me, all these things were ministering to me. Were you aware that you're going to find someone home or I think everything so. just caught you? Like you just go, get home and some random I think child this one I knew home. about it because I had those moments of random ones. But I think this one I knew. Mm. I don't recall. What stood out for me is the hug that okay. we shared with the girl okay. in the compound. And she began to live with us. And um, like I told you, this this what I went through at home mm. left me no avenue but church. Mm. I could not tell you a lot because you had such, you have such a beautiful marriage. Mm. Every time I sat with you, David this, David that, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. And me, boy. <laughs> In fact, your marriage ministered a lot to me. 
Because if I didn't have you in my face all the time about how God is so good for giving you such a good marriage, I could have gotten damaged. Like, why do people fuss about marriage? Because yeah. I told you about a wedding where I was a matron and I was feeling sorry for the bride the entire time thinking she's walking into a mistake, mm. you know? So you guys, you and David, helped me a lot. Yeah. Because I was literally single in this gig. Mm. I got used to attending family functions without my person. In fact, him coming to your wedding, I thanked God that mm. he showed up at five. To everyone, it could have been, why is he late? Why didn't he come to church? I'm thinking, well, he showed. Because mm, me, I was telling something. Jehovah, look, you're the one who walked me into this thing. Whatever you're planning, you know how you look in the sight of the masses. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So I started, to, everything became all about either alone time every mm -hmm. 4 a.m., mm. Bible time with the family at 8 p.m., Tuesday Bible study with the youth at church. Every day got its own progi. Thursday, I began mm. doing Thursday solo debts with the Lord at the Serena alone in the Bible. Okay. Everything became according to church. I remember one time I went for an evening service and the pastor was preaching and he said, you see, when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they say things they don't even know they're saying and mm. they're really, really ministering Speaking, to yeah. us. He said, the problem with you, you don't seek the Lord as you should. Because you're so busy taking care of the man and you even know the man doesn't love you. Yet you have a heavy calling upon your life. What will you tell Jesus? I almost stood up in my Bible to say, understood boss. It's okay, I've understood. I almost mm. walked out of the church. So, get a new one for that day. <laughs> I said, you know what, Michelle? Eh? Mm. Now you do Jesus. Do Jesus and the rest will fall in line. Okay. But so I began frequenting evening services. Mm. Evening services. Evening services. I'm tempted to ask, mm. um, you know how previously when he was, when he only got to come home over the weekends, mm -hmm. so you had some freedom uh -huh. within the week. Yeah. So now that he's in town and he gets to be home every day of the week, ah, okay. I'm tempted to ask, like, were you killing two birds with one stone? Like, such a God that also running you. away from I forgot home to tell you, the Lord worked again. He was taken back up country. Mm. A time came and he was moved back up country. Okay. I remember I was reading my journals. Um, the entire last week, the whole of last week, I was reading these journals so that I can have a fresh memory to mm -hmm. share. Because the one thing the Lord has done through seeking him, he erases every bad memory. He, he erases everything and leaves only himself in your mind and heart. Yeah. So when the Lord spoke to me about speaking up mm. to tell people why I left, I had to go back and read all these things. Mm. to the part where I leave the house mm. so that I can have what to share that's actually real okay. and not assumptions. Because okay. I'd get to places where I can't even remember what happened a week ago. The Lord was so nice to me when I was in my training process. There's things that would happen and I sleep well at night. I never mm. lost sleep for half a second. I never lost weight for half a second. I never looked ramshackled. Mm. He provided Jesus. People on the outside wouldn't really tell that no, things are good. No, you cannot tell. Nicole, never judge a book by its cover. People That's are true. dealing. That's true. People are dealing. So anyway, when you went back up country, mm. I've come to pass by the evening service just for just. Mm. And then the voice of the Lord through the man of God, psh, like a double-edged sword through this ear and the other inside the head. I said, okay, this is it. It's Jesus now. <gasps> Jesus all the time. Evening service all the time. So now, every time I would phone. Okay. Where are you? Church. Where are you? Church. ABCD? Church. Church. Please note, I'd also entered into a space where I don't talk much. Mm. So now I was a suspect. Praise mm. King Jesus. You're hiding something. Why aren't you talking? Now, I need you to note that one because I've just remembered something that I have to share that will build and that will come back to, okay. to that. To church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you about the second miscarriage. Mm. So, one day, I think I was with you. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, eh, Auntie Rosie is late. Auntie Rosie from Reading, aka periods. <laughs> so you said to me, let's go check. And then, bam, I'm expectant again. So I let it be, mm. the pregnancy. But after some time, I thought, okay, I'll just go to the doctors and find out. When you we went to the doctors, they did a scan. They told me the same thing. That happened with the first one. There's just a suck, Michelle. There's no baby. 
So we need to, the, to do the washout again. Now, by this time, I had entered that space where I don't bother my husband on anything. Were you, were you or was he, was he actively wanting to get a child? At that time, mm. he did, yeah, but not overly active. Okay. Yeah, just like any married couple, mm. he wanted a child. So, and by this time, he hasn't yet gone up country. Okay. So, I remember, because I think you're the one that escorted me to hospital, I was so used to being alone in this marriage that I didn't bother. Telling him? I told him what had happened, mm. but I didn't wait for him to take me to hospital. Mm. So, I, I, re I remember I went with you, the doctor told us what he told us, and he, he organized that I'd, I'd have to have a washout. Mm. So, I remember I was seated at the reception with you, and he came in, mm. and we were there, nice and humble, quiet. You know? Yeah. So, the operation was scheduled and we came in. <laughs> Michelle, before, before I went to the doctor, I saw drops of blood, signs that I was miscarrying. Mm. But before that happened, something, an incident happened at home. Okay. There was an argument between my ex-husband and her son. Remember the one I told you yes, about sir. that led for him to, to run out of the house? Yeah. And when I was asked for an opinion and I sided with the other people, I was thrown out of the house. Remember when I was thrown out of the house with my Bible? Mm. Mm -hmm. so out I of the house, out of the room? Out of the room, sorry, okay. with the Bible. So I had to leave with my son. Mm. Everything of mine was thrown out. My jewelry, you know how I can have necklaces from here to heaven? Yeah. <laughs> it was chucked out. Everything. Because you sided with the yeah, with his yeah. Son. I, I I didn't agree with him. Okay, okay. So he threw my clothes, my jewelry, my Bible. I packed everything. He knew everything you needed, so he knew to. I love that this one was thrown out first, because then my mind would be empty, and when the yeah. mind is empty, anything can happen. So it was nice for me because now I'd have peace. Because mm, you you this person it. sometimes would quarrel so much. Like maybe two hours before you fall asleep, mm. then you get the morning dew as well. Mm. Praise morning King Jesus. Amen. So I, so now I'm with my son. I read the Bible. You're I do with my son. I sleep. <laughs> but while I'm there, that's when I start sporting. Mm. Okay. Also, while I'm there, I don't know. He has a pastor. He talks to all the time from his church. I think that's the one that counsels him or advises him. I think that guy, the pastor, told him that um, your, your wife needs to come back to your room. Mm. You're not going to be fine until she returns. Okay. Because, again, that's when he, de he developed a complication. Mm. Was it diabetes? I don't know what. And then the pastor told him that if you want to be okay, she has to come back to the room. Yeah. So now he started <clears throat> to be nice to me. Mm. I'm sorry. That night, come back. Mm. I'm thinking, nah, fine where I am. <laughs> come back. Actually, I told him I'll come back if we have counseling. Because mm -hmm. what's the point in coming back and then us guys go back to where we were right, and then right. it happens again. Mm. So we're taken to a counselor. We went to the counselor. As always, three review hours review, like the <laughs> one of the honeymoon. Eh? I felt sorry for this man. Yeah, the counselor? Yeah, because at some point he said to him, okay, you pause. There's something I had to do at the bank. Can I run? Yeah. Because the counselor's office is in Wandige. Pastor said to him, that we did our MC business. Yeah. The, 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 I need to run to the bank and then I'll come back. So we sat there. Waited. waited. He came back. The gentleman carried on and Continued carried on. Continued from where he stopped. Yeah, until he was wow. empty. I noticed that something would happen to him where he had to. Pour out. Pour out. Mm. I actually started to feel sorry for him. So he would pour out and pour out until he's okay. And then I'm asked, aha, Michelle, I'd be like, you have nothing mm. to say. Mm. Nice. If, if only you could just listen and, you know, I'd give a line or two, like, me, I just want to understand, you know. So anyway, the pastor told us, uh, he counseled us and advised us and he asked me, Will you go back to your marital bedroom? I told him, yes, sir. Mm. He looked at me. Who, who looked? The, the counselor. Oh, okay. He's like, okay, good. 
So we left, and me in my, I kept hoping, Nicole. Hoping for kept, change. Yeah. Yeah. So we left holding hands. Mm, happy. Happy. And then uh, I came home, and he fetched all. I told him no. I, I told the counselor, I'll go back on condition. He's the one who picks up all those things from the other room. Because <laughs> he, no, look, because he had done all of that in the presence of the kids. Oh. All the kids knew. Oh, I see, yeah. And even if these kids are let alone that they could hear all the, that was going on in our bedroom. Mm. They could hear all of the fights. Mm. So even if they knew my position, I needed him to be ashamed at least. Mm. So anyway, he ferried the items, put them back. Mm. I came back to the room. But during that time when I was in that room, I had only, uh, I left with only one panty. The... Um. When he, th when he threw you out? When I was thrown okay. out for bad manners. Mm. I had only one panty. Mm. And I tried to knock to ask for more things. And I was told off. So I came back to my son's room. And I remember, I, I want to give the glory to God. That's why I'm sharing this, um, st this specific mm. story. At the time, I met a lady. She's called Aida Mukwano Okay. She lives in England. I met her and it was through business because, you know, we, we wanted to use her property for Airbnb. And she, she told me, Michelle, I looked for your number. I got your number from a pastor in Mutunbe because I had your testimony and I know you do Airbnb and I have property and I live in England. I need someone to take care of the property. So we met on business level. Yeah. But as we sat there, even she, she had a Bible like mine. Mm -hmm. So she began talking Jesus. We went all out on Jesus and forgot all about everything else for a mm. good few hours. Mm. So we became friends. And she's the one that introduces me to um, Hillside, where I minister okay. at Recovery Home. So as I was stepping out, she told me, Michelle, wait, I have something for you. Mm -hmm. Nicole, mm -hmm. the lady went back. She went to her bedroom and brought me a pair of knickers. Hmm? What? I sat down and I wanted to ask her, how do you know that I don't have? Mm. Because I had one. Mm. Wash it in the evening, make sure it's dry by morning so I don't antagonize. Mm. I, I saw Jesus. But how long were you locked out? Two weeks, I think. That's a long time. Yeah, I think it was two weeks. Okay. She gave it to me like a week into it. So you met, okay, a week into it. Yeah. Wow. I let her told her. Wow. But also she's very part of my journey because she was the first person but, to mm -hmm. introduce me to who my husband actually is. Mm -hmm. She said, these were her words. I came to see her one day and she said, no, I heard from someone else that her husband had died. But I know the husband was living in Uganda and she was living in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I went, you know, to see her like, how are you doing? I heard mm -hmm. you lost your husband. And she told me, yeah, Michelle, but God is so good. Because, you know, I got a lot of money from people. It was so nice. People sent me money from the UK. God handled mm -hmm. all the funeral. And come and see my lovely bed. There's this bed I've always wanted. So from all of these mabugo, what are they called? Contributions yeah, yeah, um, for the funeral. What are they? Condolences. Condolences. Yeah. 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 I got my dream bed. So I'm looking at this chick and thinking, I thought we had come to cry. <laughs> and then she told me, Michelle, my husband was a gift. I stood up and gave a speech at the funeral and everyone's jaw dropped. I said, what do you mean? I found God so much for him because everything that I went through in that marriage is what introduced me to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am referred to in England as a friend of Jesus because of what I learned through that gentleman. Mm -hmm. So that's when I sat back and I thought, hold up. Is it possible that Juliet's husband is my husband's cousin? <laughs> so I told her my side of story, how my life yeah. is moving. And she told me, you need to thank God. I am who I am today because of my husband. So pay close attention to what God is teaching you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fast on your behalf. Everything will be fine. I thanked her for my new pair of knickers and I went home. But that was the beginning of me discovering who my husband actually is. is. But um, I wanted to ask the, the, um, the process of you being locked out because he had work. 
Mm. Did he used to go with the kids? No. I'm an early riser. Put them somewhere. I'm an early riser. Mm. So you would leave before. Yeah, I can't so. be on my back mm. past a certain hour. Mm. Remember, I wake up at four to seek the Lord. Yeah. And once I'm done, get show and out. Like I'm used to. I, I I don't know how to lounge. Okay. Yeah. So I would leave. Mm. Or if he had to leave, he would lock up. Even to go downstairs to eat, he would lock up. Wow, even when he's in the house? Yeah. So you had no opportunities of sneaking in? To get knickers? No, but God gave me a pair of knickers. Isn't he wonderful? Let me tell you something. I have told you, the deeper I was pushed into the gutters, mm. the more I saw Christ. So Christ was with you yeah. in, in everything. So when this story comes in of, oh, I am so sorry, I said, let's go for counseling. Yeah, let's go. And I'm in agreement. Mm. He comes back, takes my to things back things. to the room. Yeah. And then round about that time, now it's time for washing out my belly. Yeah. So I'm being wheeled into theater. I remember being outside of that theater room and I called my pastor. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure that this time Jesus was coming. <laughs> you know, before Jesus came when I was yeah. napping, so I was thinking, ah, let me call my pastor. So I called my pastor, I said, this is what's happening. I'm going into theater. He prayed for me. Mm -hmm. Now in that room, it was so interesting. This second time around, these girls, the nurses, they're mm -hmm. trying to find my veins and they can't find a single vein. Pierced here, pierced there, everywhere. And it's becoming so disturbing. Meanwhile, when I was going in, my husband was so scared. Remember, we just reconciled two days ago? Yeah, so you're in love. And the other time he was not around. Mm -hmm. So now he's oh, around. Yeah, he was not around. Yeah. Are we in love? Maybe he is. Me, I'm on a job. You're, you're, you're in a good place now. Yeah, place yeah. Know. Protecting my heart. Mm. So, they're piercing me like for a good half an hour. And I said, but Jesus, what is all of this? Then I got um, a vision mm -hmm. of the cross. That's the first time the cross meant so much to me. Because after the vision, I started to think, oh, so this is how you were at the cross. I said, yep. So as these girls are looking for the veins, I'm like this in my, you know that cut gown they put on yeah. you when you're yeah. going into theater. Now they're just seeing a river of teardrops. <laughs> because before I was talking to them normally. So they start you know, to comfort me. I told them, please don't. Do not comfort me. These are not tears of sadness. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'd appreciate it if you just be quiet about it. But it's okay. I'm not in pain. But I had that moment of, oh my God, Jesus, this is what you went through for mm. us. And, and it's okay. They can pierce everywhere they like. Mm. It's fine. It's like I, I got into a lifestyle of getting used to pain. Mm. So finally they got what they were looking for. I went to sleep. Mm. Oh, there was just so much in the spiritual realm in that <laughs> bed. Did Jesus I come? don't know what's wrong with that hospital. Mm. There was so much drama when I was in there. Mm -hmm. Some of which I can't even like, I can't really speak about. Yeah. But what I remember is... You went to a different hospital this time? Same. Okay. One of the girls that attended to me, I've forgotten her name, but I know she's in that phone. The Lord told me, tell her I need her. Okay. Tell her to come to me. Mm. There's so much going on in her life. Tell her, I know. Yeah. She needs to give her life to Christ because she's Muslim. Mm. And I thought to myself, you mean now I'm going through all of this for that chick? You... <laughs> anyway, so when I come back, mm. I am so bubbly. But you know when the anesthesia is wearing off and for you, you're just too lively and I'm talking, talking, and I'm asking for her. Yeah. And when she came, I gave her her message. I told mm. her, you know what? Please give your life to Christ. Yada, yada, yada. So anyway, they will me out of theater. I come back to my bed. Mm. My husband. Tears. Mm. I was like, oh, wow. He has tears. Finally. Perhaps now. Mm, now we are I'll be treated like a baby. You know? Finally. So he felt bad about this one as well. Yeah. This, and I don't know. Was he was happening. so scared. Maybe he thought I wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was there when I was passing out. You know, oh, sometimes they wheel you back and you're not yet back. So either way. And I think he's, maybe he has a phobia for hospitals. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the sight was, oh my God, it's nice to see you in that position. Humble. You know? Yeah. So 
hours later I was sent home. When I was on that bed, it's a Saturday. A voice said to me, church tomorrow. Mm. And I thought, yeah, I feel fine. So the next morning, um, I told him I'm going to church. I also knew what, what it means to stay home. Yeah. The guests could come. Mm. I mean, whatever happens before he starts quarreling. Mm -hmm. I don't want a visitation from that side. So I got up, got that all the energy, drove to church. church. And I remember as I was driving to church on that bypass, I saw three masts on a hill. Three what? Masts. Okay. Telecom masts. Mm. And the vision in um, the hospital came back. Okay. The cross, eh? mm. three crosses. And I started to play um, Thank You for the Cross, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. You call it, all, the long, all these days I'd listen to that song mm -hmm. while looking to Jesus on the cross. And now he was telling me, you're the one on the cross. Mm. Girl, I cried all the way to church. Like, oh my. Mm. I understand now. He told me, Michelle, carry the cross. There's a lot of my women out there going through a lot of things that they can't tell another person because the people will not believe them. Yeah. There's a lot of women that have been buried, a lot of women in the graveyard. Mm. They can't speak up from the grave. Mm. There's a lot of girls that have been entered into arrangements and they can't speak up. There's a lot of girls that enter marriages via a mere dream and they yeah. don't know what they're doing. There's a lot. He gave me a lot of categories. So he said, carry the cross mm. so that you can go and minister to my women. And that's when the voice came loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Your ministry is women. Wow. Women and children. Yeah, but Michelle, mm -hmm. you can't minister to women if you mm -hmm. don't know what they're going through. So I was encouraged some more to sit and learn. This is now making sense because earlier you shared that when you were walking down the aisle, mm. someone told, told, told you that mm. the, the pastor that was officiating the wedding was... The good was ushering you into ministry. That's what someone told you. God rest that your gentleman in peace. He's such a nice guy, and he quite so, liked me. And now it's uh, God is revealing it to you as well. Your ministry is women. Everything a woman goes through, you have to go through, because you have to go through it to understand. You can only minister to, to a person from a place of understanding. Understanding, yes. You have to go through it to acquire the mercy to accommodate mm -hmm. another person. That's right. Nicole, if you look good all the time, mm. and I phone you and I tell you I don't have what to wear, you'd be like, weird. I have mm. four closets. Mm -hmm. You get. You have to, you have to have to walked around in leaves to appreciate a piece of cloth. That's right. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Guys, I think this, is, this can be a nice end of... All we, right, so um, hold on. Okay, now that um, we are still going forward with Michelle, but I'd love to give her the opportunity to tell us about where we are right now. Michelle, please tell the viewers about this place. This is Crest Homes, Uganda. Mm -hmm. These are very lovely apartments. It is so nice of them to host us for this opportunity to speak to the women out there. Mm -hmm. I'd be very, very humbled, honored, if you paid them a visit whilst you are in Uganda. They're so nice. They're doing this as a sacrifice for me to minister to the people out there. I know you always watch my YouTube channel and you must be thinking, oh, what a lovely place. Somebody asked me one day, is that your home? I said to myself, <laughs> in the <wish>. future. <laughs> so it's a lovely place and the people are really nice. Mm. And um, it's spacious. It has free internet, Wi-Fi has cable tv very nice security the guards are very they respect our privacy they're so friendly they're god-fearing the prices are really good it's only 40 dollars a night and um i got an opportunity of spending a night here last night and um the beds i felt like a princess like i, I slept on this side and then i moved over to the other <laughs> side and the beddings are white a thousand cotton count what's that word egyptian cotton those fancy words and um, I like the shower. The pressure of the water mm. is so nice. Tell them about the it's, um, location. It's located in Kitende. 
on Entebbe Road. It's a few minutes drive from um, the main road on Entebbe Road. It's a um, 20 minutes drive from the airport, half an hour's drive from the airport. It has easy access to the bypass in case you're not into traffic and touring, you know. But um, it's easy access to every, all of your needs whilst on holiday. There's mm -hmm. Kajansi Market, there's Quality Supermarket, there's many petrol stations. There's KFC there's now. KFC, there's a new KFC in, on Entebbe Road in Kitende and it's walking distance to KFC. So if you are outside of Uganda and you wish to come to Uganda and you're wondering where shall I stay, Crest Homes Uganda. We have a page on an Instagram and obviously we'll show you the phone numbers at the end. But the good news also is it's not just this apartment. There's six of them, two bedroom each. So you can come in as a family, as a group. And you have such a good time. Thank you.